Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel and welcome to a Some Assemblage Required video along with a Mixed Media Mayhem video. Today's Mixed Media Mayhem inspiration comes from Missy Widden and it is a layout that she did for the Paige Evans design team and I thought it was really beautiful and it would translate really well into a masculine layout. So I am using a couple of different um, stencils. Uh, the one that I'm working with currently there right there is from Paper Rose and the other one I'm not sure where it's from. Um, I am using a couple of different shimmers products to color these up. I am using Ahoy Matey and I am also using some Witch's Blue to color this one into these um, cool colors, the blues and whatnot. So uh, this particular layout is going to be about my son working on his girlfriend's car. I know I do this periodically, but he's doing a lot of work on this vehicle for her. And um, I wanted to definitely capture all of that. And so I am now sprinkling this with a little bit of the Media Gloss Spray in Medieval and in Ancient. One is kind of a charcoal gray, almost black, and the other one is... Uh, more of a bronzy color and then I did add a little bit of um, I think it was either syrup or gilt uh, and then this other one I'm doing in the warm tones I'm going with reds and a little bit on into the blue by using some of the lumberjack plaid distress oxide I am also using some festive berries festive berries distress oxide which has a little bit of a pinkish hue to it and then I added a little bit of Tangelo Media Gloss Spray and then adding a little bit more Ancient right over the top there. And I'm liking the way that this is looking. If you're curious about uh, the mixed media paste that I put through there, it is actually Paper Glaze in our Artemisia Silver. And uh, it acts a little bit like a resist and allows me to take a baby wipe after and rub off all of that red or blue or whatever color you had put over the top. Um, in this case, it was the reds and the blues. Um, I did actually smudge a little bit of red down here. And so I'm just going over it with a little bit more of that medieval uh, color from uh, Dina Wakely. And that is a sparkly kind of a color. It's not flat. It, it definitely has a sparkle to it and it looks really cool. So I want them to look a little bit worn and a little bit um, imperfect. So this works for me. Um, again, just rubbing off the top so that it has um, the silver shows through. And I don't rub it off of all of it, but I, I didn't want it to be um, completely tainted by these other colors. Anyway, um, while I do that, don't forget there are a bunch of people playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem. There is a list down below and there is also a link to the Mixed Media Mayhem Facebook group if you want to go and join us. The final Friday of every month we invite everyone to join along and play it with all of the fun. Um, these are the colors that I've used. I used syrup and uh, gilt. Gilt is kind of a goldish orange color and syrup is kind of a brownish orange color. The brownish orange one is not um, metallic at all, but gilt is metallic. So those went over this red here to give it kind of more of an orange feel and very much like what Missy's got going on in hers. She's got the warm colors on one side and the um, cool colors on the other side. So now I'm just going to go ahead and rip some papers to layer right down the center just like she's got going on and I'm um, sticking with some blues and some reds just to keep with that same color scheme that I've got going. Uh, works really well because in the photos my son is wearing a sweatshirt that is gray and a hat that's gray, two different shades of gray, but they read kind of um, as blue undertones and he's got blue gloves on and her car is blue and then he's also wearing red shorts and then the lights from her car are orange so it it goes really well <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these circles out to take the place of the doily like items that she's got in her layout I don't think they're actually doilies I think they're cut out from maybe a pattern paper or something like that um, because it doesn't look like it has all of the little holes that, that a doily would have um, but I, since I wanted my masculine, I went with these more masculine types of image images. So I'm just trying to figure out how wide I need to rip this piece to go down the center. 
because I know I want a center section and I want it layered up a particular way. I just don't know um, how wide the top one should be based on how wide the bottom one is going to be. So uh, I, I don't want to cut it or rip it too narrow and then I don't have enough um, area covered. And so uh, the blue piece that I already did right there is the top piece. And then this is going to be the bottom piece. This is an acetate that has uh, velvety polka dots. And it is really old. It is from, um, I believe, Fancy Pants, I believe. And then I just cut it into two sections so I can spread those apart as far as I want. And um, I'm going to build my way out. So. I decided to go with the blue section being just what it is there on the screen and um, rather than using an entire piece of that acetate underneath I would split it and then I would be able to maneuver it however wide I wanted it and then I'm going to do the same with these other pieces I'm not going to put a big red piece on the left hand side like I am the right hand side because that side is uh, the left hand side is where that big red circular piece is going but I do want a little bit to stick out on the left hand side even though I've got the blue circle there I'm still tucking in a little bit of the blue uh, because a lot of that blue circle is going to be covered by title work and photo photo so uh, I think this makes it work well and I really like the way that it ends up looking I am inking everything with some black set distress ink just to give uh, a little bit of definition between all of those layers and to kind of grunge it up a bit. I'm going to use some liquid glue to go ahead and adhere everything and um, I, I really have been liking my liquid glue lately. I don't use my ATG as much as I did uh, before and this allows me to just kind of maneuver things around a little bit and kind of slide them over if I need to tuck them in more. Uh, it's a, a lot less permanent right at the beginning and so I like that fact and it gives me a little bit of um, wiggle room. I am going to trim this piece down. I, it was a little bit on the large size for what I wanted and I like that it has a lot of like, um, I'm going to say concentric circles. I don't know that they're actually concentric, but it's got a lot of different circles on it. So it allows me to trim it down. Whereas the other one, I can't trim it down a whole lot without losing the effect that it is a tire tread so um, being able to trim the, the the blue one down was really helpful now I did go ahead and use my ATG to adhere the entire thing down and um, I am going to add a little bit of mixed media using more of the witches blue um, shimmers product and that works just like a watercolor you just spray the pot inside the pot which is dry and then um, when you spray it it gets wet and you can apply it just like a watercolor um, some of their products are shimmery and some of them are not and um, they have both options available so this particular one does have uh, like a silvery shimmer to it in the light and I really like the way that it looks so I just did a little bit of splatter as well right over the top and I'm pretty happy with the way that that looks um, it's kind of got that grayish blue look to it which is very similar to the papers that I'm using so that makes me very happy now I'm gonna add this uh, acrylic piece from MK's shop over to the right hand side here hanging down it's got gears it's got wrenches it is absolutely perfect for this layout because he's got wrenches and cars have gears and it all makes sense in my mind and it's kind of got those orange looks to it that oxidized rusty look to it and it brings that orange over to the right hand side or the warm colors over to the right hand side even more and then I'm going to use a few different gears out of this particular pack um, I don't recall the name of the individual packs but I will list them down below along with the other products that I am using so that you can check that out if that's of interest to you and then I am also using one of these canvas flare buttons that came in the monthly embellishment box for June I am going to run it through my Sizzix um, switch and flatten it though because 
uh, I want it to be flatter than it is and and I really liked the way that it looks um, and so I think I'm doing that to all my flare from now on <laughs> that's kind of a blanket statement but I think I might because it I just like the way that it looks um, I am again inking up the edges of these pieces with some more black soot distress ink to make them pop a little more and I'm liking how that looks grunging them up making them a little bit dirty I am also going to pull out some wood veneer pieces from MK's um, collection and it's going to have some wrenches and some um, a screwdriver and I think the other one is it's either two screwdrivers or a screwdriver and a nut driver I'm not sure um, but yeah I, that's what I'm using and I think those are perfect also and I'm leaving them in their natural wood state because uh, this flare that I smashed that says it's a boy thing is uh, kind of that along those same tan lines and then my son's friend is also wearing tan in the shirt and the background has a lot of tan in it as well so I thought that ad adding that looked really nice um, it's, a, it's a neutral color and um, leaving them natural is going to make me happy so just playing with the actual um, spot that I put these photos down and same with these big circular pieces because I want to make sure that I'm not covering up anything that I want seen in the photo. I don't need the entire vehicle scene um, so the photos are going to la overlap a bit but I want to make sure that I I leave enough room up above so that they're not um, you know too far towards the top of the page. So I'm liking how these gears are looking. The top one uh, over on the left hand side is like a half of a gear and it works fine. You can just tuck it in or you can use it as a half gear. You can have it going off your page, do whatever you need to with it. Um, these do have backers on them. So I'm going to pull the backs off um, and then I'm just going to adhere those down using some, I think I'm using my liquid adhesive for that. Although maybe not, I might be using some glue dots and both work. Um, I typically use glue dots except when things are really narrow and fine. It's really hard to put a glue dot on it. So uh, using the liquid glue also works. Now I did pop these the circular elements up onto some foam and so my gears tuck nicely underneath because the foam is the same height as the gears and so that allows me to have that layered look and I'm liking how that is all coming together. It's making me very happy adding a little bit more foam to just support these photos so they, they don't get dented in the album or smushed in, or, or bent in any way. And so uh, I want to make sure that um, you have a good layer of support underneath them. And I'm using my liquid glue to adhere those down. I find that my ATG does not stick great to the uh, foam. And normally I put the adhesive side of the foam on the photograph and then glue it to the page, but I did it reverse this time. Um, not for any specific reason other than to make sure the foam fit between the gears and the circular elements. My title is going to be When in Doubt Fix It. Um, this is also a video for Use, use the Stuff, and uh, I forgot to put that thumbnail right at the beginning, but I am trying to use up some stuff that is in my stash and so one of the big things that I wanted to kind of focus on was using st um, these thicker word stickers and so my title is going to be when in doubt fix it and it allows me to use the when in doubt from one set of thickers and then fix it is out of an, a different set of thickers and then I'm going to add some stars over or a star over to the left hand or right hand no left hand side <laughs> I'm looking at my layout and I'm backwards um, to the left hand side and then I'm also adding this gear the small gear with a hole in the middle and a black star out of this pack of kind of confetti it's uh, circles it's got a couple st some stars in it and it's got some little plus marks that I am also going to use I'm going to actually use all of the little plus marks in here I think there's six of them I don't know if it's just a scoopful that you get or if they're actually counted out. So yours may or may not have the exact same amount as mine. But um, I'm using three up here in the upper right hand side by the title. And then I'm going to use three 
by the gears in the lower left hand side. And then here's the set of uh, tools that I am using. And again, I'm using some wrenches and some screwdrivers. And I think my crescent wrench did not make it on this particular layout, but that's okay. I use a couple of the other ones and I'm really happy with the way that it turns out. Um, I did tell MK I need like an entire package of these little stars. <laughs> they are so cool, but they are so tiny. I'm sure they are a big pain to cut, but they are amazing. Um, I really like them. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully she cut some more because <laughs> I've used them all of mine. So I'm just playing around with where I want these wood tools to go. And all of the wood veneer in her shop comes with a masking over it. It doesn't look like it because it's the same color as the wood, but you need to pull that masking off um, so that it reveals the actual wood veneer. Um, I do tend to forget to do that. So I have to go in and do it on a couple. <laughs> I've had to go in and do it on a couple of layouts after the fact, but um, I am trying to be better about remembering to do it right off the bat. So that's what I'm doing there, pulling the uh, masking off of the front of the tools. And then they are also adhesive back. So you just pull the adhesive back protector sheet off the back and they stick right down. You don't have to put any adhesive down or anything. And I really like the way that that looks and that that works. It makes it so much easier. I am just adding a little bit of extra foam behind the T to make it sure that it doesn't squash down. And that is it, you guys. If you have questions or comments, leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe and uh, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to check out everyone else playing along with Mixed Media Mayhem. The list is down below for you. And don't forget to go check out MK Shop if you are interested in any of these products. She's got a great selection. I'll see you guys again on Sunday with another video. Bye-bye.